to me, this is a pitching matchup where you don't have a whole lot of confidence either way. And so instead, it's time to look at the hitters and maybe some player props. And as lazy as this may sound, I think backing Shoei Otani is more than okay here against Lance Lynn. Recent form, matchup, all of that good stuff. Over one and a half bases for him is even money. What do you think, Joe? Anything on this game that stands out to you? You White Sox homer, you? Yeah, (laughs) not that. Uh, Otani, (laughs) 8 for 18 against Lynn. And the Angels overall, overall their offense has been very hot over the last couple of weeks. Now, Lynn's last couple starts, he's actually looked all right, but uh, it was less than a month ago when Lynn did go against the Angels, and it was ugly. He lasted only four innings, eight runs on eight hits. I believe he gave up three home runs in that game, one to Trout Mm -hmm. and two to Otani. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think that was an afternoon game as well. Either way, they smashed him, and... I, I don't know that uh, his the way he's been rolling of late is going to continue. A couple starts ago, he had 16 strikeouts or whatever. I, I don't think that's going to continue too long once you see uh, Lynn starting to look all right. I I like the Angels. I like the Angels in this spot. And if you want to go run line, I do not have a problem with that. The Brewers at the Mets. You got Scherzer on the mound. I'm wondering if this is just a little too much for Max Scherzer and the Mets. He hasn't been, you know, the same guy. He's got a 395 ERA. He is due for some positive regression, but Hauser's been really good too. I'm <laughs> I haven't done it yet. So if you if you want to look at full game run line, the Brewers plus one and a half is just it's juiced. Uh, I'm seeing even let's see minus one thirty at Bad MGM. Should I be bold, guys, and just do Brewers money line plus one seventy? Doesn't this kind of seem like an even matchup? Both these bullpens are average as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I guess I... with Scherzer, he always does go deep. I don't know; it's a tough one, but I just think you're getting a lot of value on a pretty good Brewers team, and you just don't know what. I mean. It seems like yesterday the Mets were flailing. So they were and they and they lost again yesterday after Cohen comes out. He has a big press conference. I'm gonna talk tomorrow. And every in the New York media gathers and uh he kind of put everyone on notice. It's like, yeah, mm-hmm. basically admitting he regrets spending as much money as he did based on the results. And he's like, <laughs> Yeah, I'm not gonna keep spending if it's not worth it. If if this is a lost season, I'm not gonna go out there and buy for what? So the teams put on notice and they go out and lose five to two. Cubs are not looking good since returning from London. I don't know if that's the reason, but uh, they are trying to avoid getting swept today by the Phillies. And Cal Hendricks does not have good history against this uh, Philly squad. A 89 at bat sample size. They have a 900 OPS. They're hitting 326 off of him. And this one's about even money. Phillies slight favorites, minus 115 with Taiwan Walker on the bump. Um, I, I could certainly see the Cubs getting swept tonight. That, that would not be the most uh, surprising thing. Um, so I'm interested to see how much longer this lasts. We both uh, went on record and said that we like the Cubs to win this division, and uh, they're not playing some great ball. It's an important stretch before they get to the all-star break here. As far as last night, some sports books took it down. Because they thought Fantilli was a lock at two and Carlson was a lock at three. They didn't have where you could bet on those first three spots. We knew about Bedard. Nobody ever uh, had Bedard posted. But uh, as far as all the ones I saw, there was only one mock draft that had the top four in order. Bedard, Carlson, Fantilli, and Will Smith. Um, Just one. And uh, the guy that made the case for Carlson, too, was talking about Verbeek's connection with Swedish players in Detroit. And so he saw that more than anybody else out there. Um, the Bedard thing is funny. The reaction here, it's, he can't, it feels like he can't meet expectations already. He's 17. And what, oh, we got Patrick Kane again. Oh, we got, we got our own Crosby now. Hockey is back in Chicago. Here we go. Like, if you don't win a cup soon, it's going to be a big disappointment. So it's, it's going to be interesting to watch. 
we'll see it. You know, if the Liberty look really good and maybe even come out with a win this game, they, they might be a good futures bet right now. I'm seeing plus 170, plus 180 a lot of places. In terms of bets on this game, I do lean Liberty. I'm seeing plus seven and a half. Uh, the total, I'm probably staying away from because it's the highest total we've had all season in the mid-170s, and it deserves to be so. Uh, I, I do love a couple props in this game. Asia Wilson overs 19.5 points, or if it, I've seen it move to 20.5 at some places, I still like it there. Uh, and then same deal with her rebounds, 9.5 rebounds. She's averaging 30 minutes a game this year, but that's because, like I said, they've been blowing out so many teams. When she gets more than 30 minutes a game this year she's six and one on that over 19 and a half points she's also five and two on that at home uh this is going to be a playoff atmosphere type of game we're going to see starters go 33 34 35 minutes so really any overs in this game are probably going to be better than unders i would stay away from under props in this game but i think asia in particular is a good look the sun were definitely the biggest challenger to the liberty of the aces if you were going to pivot to a third team and then they lost you know, star center, Brianna Jones. Uh, I was on preseason 25 plus wins and their win total over was 20 and a half, but I had to hedge out the middle under 27 and a half when that injury happened uh, because that she's a huge part of what they do on both ends of the floor in terms of anchoring the defense and, and offensive rebounding, scoring in the post. Uh, so I would be a little bit wary of taking the sun at this point at that plus 1200 number. Mm -hmm. Uh, and same deal with the Mystics. When you look at the next challenger there at plus 2,000, they just lost their center for a few weeks, not for the whole season like Brianna Jones. Uh, Shakira Austin just went down, so they will get her back, and they actually played really well in their first game yesterday without her. Uh, we'll see if that continues over the next few weeks as they navigate life without her, but uh, it's really tough when the biggest challengers to the super teams have dealt with some key injuries. Uh, it just really sort of widens the gap, so I probably wouldn't really be looking at anyone futures right now other than the Aces or Liberty. While there's a lot of pub and a lot of folks, especially within the BetQL family, have suggested uh -huh. that the 49ers <laughs> should just go on and win the Super Bowl and not even play this oh, year. No. Kyle Shanahan is a perfect example of why you shan't succumb to recency bias. His record as a head coach by season, let's go over it. Six and 10, four and 12, 13 and three, six and 10, 10 and seven, 13 and four. So two great years, a solid year, and three duds. Then if you go to simple rating system, you get similar findings. Two great years, an okay year, and a few duds. Now, I would argue that he's had some rough luck at the quarterback position, so he should never, ever, ever be on the hot seat. But to say that he can have a great year regardless of the quarterback position this season is absolutely nuts, Joe. You know, we have this BetQL Daily, BetQL Daily crime going on with these wagers that we're making. How about us against BetMGM tonight? We take yeah! the under, they take the over. We'll come up with something. How, because, yeah, I mean, oh, Kyle Shanahan, genius. They're going to move on. They're going to win the West. They're going to win the conference. They're going to win the Super Bowl. It's that easy. Now, there are a lot of things working against them this year. And uh, first off, okay, I, you got to start with quarterback. Is this real? Like, there are people saying that it could be Sam Darnold QB1 to start the season. Like, that's happening. Is he ahead of Trey Lance? Um, you know, based off of the Purdy injury and people not considering, oh, by the way, much of that 8 no Purdy run was against the worst defenses in football. No, it's the genius of Kyle Shanahan. It's all because of Kyle Shanahan. Um, okay, okay. I, I, have, I still have questions about that seventh-round draft pick. I still have questions. And let's see it, it, when he goes against a tough schedule, which would happen this year. They are really up against it. The number of teams that they're going to face off a of bye, uh, sitting on the West Coast, they have five games with 10 a.m. body clock starts scheduled. Uh, three different times, they have back-to-back -back road games. They travel 30,000 miles, second most in the NFL. So th there are going to be some challenges for this team that I don't think a lot of people are taking a look at because, well, they, they had a 12-game winning streak second half of last year and going into the playoffs a little bit. This team's untouchable with the offensive genius. They can do anything. He can make any quarterback work. I don't know that it's all that simple.